Hello there, I'm Hartis Glova and this is just a sign that I'm still alive. Yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't make any videos in the past uh, about three months. That's because, um, as you can see, I've been moving, I've got a new uh, workbench, everything in a new room. Still is quite a mess, but what I'm really happy about is I finally have a place where I can put all my Amiga stuff and, of course, my workbench not referring to the operating system but yeah so that was a lot of stuff to do also um, I have got some new machines that I will do a little bit more detailed overview about and well this is just an update video just to show you um, what's going currently on here are all my shelves where I've got all my Amiga stuff and my hi-fi gear as well as my very important TV and the internet router. This was also the reason why uh, it took so long, because uh, I got this thing just this week. So yeah, yeah um, that's probably the main reason why um, I couldn't upload any videos. But um, yeah. The next two videos that I will be uploading will uh, be a small tutorial on how to hook up and use the HXE floppy emulator. And after that there will be a small um, video about the Commodore 64 power supply I made. As you can see this is a new one with a 3D printed case. And I have designed a similar case, well it's almost identical as you can see, for uh, the older version which was a switch mode power supply, since this one here is not. This is just a complete rebuilt version of the original Commodore 64 power supply. And there will also be a small repair video on a Amiga 500 Plus, which had got uh, some issues with a leaked battery. And I have also done a small modification on this machine. I installed a supercapacitor instead of the battery. Unfortunately, I don't have the RAM expansion for this, so I only have the one megabyte instead of two. But, yeah. There will also be a repair video on the 2000 and a overview of the 4000. And I also had got some issues with this machine just being the power supply, so nothing really to worry about. Now this is the machine I'm really happy about. Unfortunately, it's just the O30 model. Uh, I will try one day if I actually manage to max this thing out to a O60 and with almost uh, half a gigabyte of RAM in there. But for now, I'll just do a small video about uh, my recent Amiga score. As you can see, I've got Quite a lot of stuff here on my workbench. First of all, being another Amiga 500. Who would have guessed? Now, this machine is very interesting. It's the first one uh, that has got the silver Commodore logo and A500 written on it, as well as my A500 Plus. I have never seen these machines in real life with that. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the Commodore logo on. That would be amazing, because all of my other Amigas don't have that. Hmm. So, yeah, this is just the A500, a little bit yellowish, but the case is in great condition. We have got a uh, RAM switch, which I would definitely prefer to be on the back, but eh, you can put it wherever you want. Also, it's got the RAM expansion, of course. Then I've got a box of floppies. Yay! For someone who uses a floppy emulator, having these things is weird. But, yeah. There's a ton of old uh, floppy disks I've got. They've rarely been used. And there is actually nothing really stored on them, so... Uh, yeah. Uh, but now uh, up to 60 floppy disks that I can use for something. They were mostly used for Windows, which does not run on this machine. <coughs> uh, 
And well, if you think, well, that's not 60. Yeah, well, here are the rest. A whole bag full of floppies. I would love to know how many megabytes these are. Hmm. Then the box, of course, the owner gave me. Let's get this out of the way. We have a power supply. Oh, oh no, it's the old one. It's the old one. Oh, sh whoa. Can already tell. Ah, it's the 2.5 amp version. Sad. Hmm. So, not that great, but still definitely usable since a lot of these machines require a lot more current. Then we've got a gigantic external floppy drive and black. Quite nice. And also black cable. I have no idea if this stuff works, but <laughs> I can still repair it. Another important thing, we have got another mouse. Oh, the fifth one I believe I've got. Or the sixth one, I don't know. Then there are two Mega 520 TV modulators to get composite video out of this thing, or just to hook it up uh, through the RF. Which is a bad idea because it will just <laughs> ruin the picture quality. Also, the composite video will ruin it, but if you just want to use it and don't care about the quality of the image, that's what you need. So, I've got three of these things now in total. Then, a very beautiful joystick, a competition pro joystick, the second competition pro joystick I now have. Whoa. That feels absolutely crazy. <laughs> These joysticks are just epic. Unfortunately, it seems this button here is stuck. But yeah, fixing that is also no big deal. And we can turn the auto fire off and on. Oh, it's a three position one. <laughs> Interesting. Don't know what the third position does. Then we've got the user manual for the video adapter. A Amiga DOS user manual in German. All the stuff you need to get Amiga DOS running. We have one of these epic, I'm being sarcastic right now, video cables. Seriously, do not use the RF on these, to just ruin everything. And, haha, <laughs> an Amiga 500 original user manual. Uh, I wanted these <laughs> so often, and it was so hard to find them online or just the PDF files, because most of the pages want you to pay. We have a... Dow Jones Tellerate uh, mouse pad? I don't know, it's got a bunch of phone numbers. Uh, I have no idea what it's for, but definitely useful, the mouse pad. And who would have guessed? We've got another box of floppies, and another box of floppies, and more floppies and even more floppies this is just absolutely crazy and we've got these <laughs> I love these cables they're awesome to make either uh, mono to stereo or stereo to mono that's great so basically one of these cables plugs into the audience on the Amiga 520 and the others two plug in right and left, but that is only if you use the RF, which I don't recommend. Definitely useful for the Nintendo Entertainment System to get the mono audio on both sides, left and right. So, yeah, definitely clean up, have to clean up my workbench now. Right. 
And I finally have got now original <laughs> Commodore Amiga workbench discs, which I'm really happy about. So, yeah, well, just a quick sign that I'm still alive and, you yeah, know, what I've recently been doing. The other videos I will hope will be uploaded next week, because I still got a lot of stuff to do. Until then, see you.